You're so excited. <laughs> so excited. Have a coffee is us. Right? Perfect morning. <laughs> Perfect morning with me? Welcome to the You've Changed podcast. My name is Kate Barron. This is the podcast where I talk to people in the entertainment industry about moments in their life that have changed them. And I am here today with the wonderful comedian, writer, actor, presenter, oh. podcaster, uh-huh. lover, yep. friend, yep. handsome soldier. Oh. Wow. I um, that and one, uh, sure. Muslim extremist. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they call me on the street. Ishan Akbar. Hi. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> did you like that intro? Is that good? Yeah. Is that going to get me cancelled? No, it might get me cancelled, though. <laughs> um, How are you? You um, just said you're having a perfect morning, and that just... includes me, and that makes me feel very special. The thing is, Kate, is your energy has always been one that just breeds joy. Stop. From the moment, whenever, from the moment, I think, what, maybe the fourth time we've interacted with each other? Yeah, we. I mean, if you think about it, yeah, because yeah, we like see each other kind of like in passing yeah. or at gigs and stuff. Yeah. But do you remember? Yeah, we don't. Even, oh, yeah, we don't God. even know each other. That no, no, no. I'm not gonna say anything. Okay, like, do you remember when you fucking when you said this? <laughs> pinned me down against the wall. And, yeah, and I was like, no, no. <laughs> oh, why have we gone down this route? Like, well, I know. Yeah. So early in the morning, it's because we're not both awake. Yeah. Um. No, but like we hadn't even known each other that well, and we were in Edinburgh, and we were at the Dave party, mm-hmm. and you were feeding me like tater tots. You were eating like tater tots, and I was just like, "Oh, those are good." And you were just like feeding them, and then I just kept taking them, and you were just like feeding me tater tots. And I was like, "This is just so lovely. This is just such a lovely interaction." And we don't even know each other that well, but we know each other enough to go. The vibe is right. Yeah, the vibe is actually. I think sometimes you pick that up from people where you just go, "You're the kind of person I feel like I could feed." Tater tots too. Do you know there's that kinks moment. where people have feeding kinks? They're called feeders, and they like want to date. Like that was the thing because I used to be like really big, and there uh-huh. used to be guys who'd be like, "Yeah, I want to date you, but like, can I watch you eat a lasagna?" And I'd be like, "No." Are you serious? I swear to God, it's their kink is like to feed fat people, and then they're like, Ugh. like they get off. On how that. so fucked? How did they find that out? Yeah, well, how, okay. Their, so their mum, their fat mum, was eating a lasagna, <laughs> and they were like. Oh. They got a hard on watching their fucking fat mother shove her face full of McDonald's. And then they're like, like, oh yeah. I'm into this. I'm into this. But like smothering fetishes, all of that shit too. Like it's all, it's wild that shit. Cause yeah. like, and obviously like, I mean, there's a thing of like, if you're part of sort of any particular group, that's not sort of like the average sort of typical beauty group. Right. It's mm. like people have fetishes or like, I have like black girlfriends of mine who are like, Oh yeah. The guys who I date, like you always have to go like, do you like me for me? Or do you like me? Cause you were like, want to fuck an ebony princess. And they're yeah, like yeah, yeah. so gross about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then it's like, do you want to date someone? Like, it's like, I knew a girl who I know her, she's still alive. <laughs> I know a girl who she has a disability and she's like, I always wonder, is this a turn on for people? It might be. But then is it wrong that they're turned on by well, you? Well, this is the thing, right? So I've got a, I've got a bit of material where I talk about how I'm not incentivized to lose weight because I keep getting laid. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Good for you. Congratulations. Hi, hi guys. Hi. I would have just assumed you were a virgin, but I'm so... Oh, actually, you're on TV now, so no, girls like to fuck for TV. Hey, credits. listen, I was fucking from before TV, all right? Oh, okay. Good for just FYI. <laughs> yeah? All right. My parents made the arrangements. at the age of 27. Yeah, my parents made the arrangements. And... <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it was, so, so, there is this thing where sometimes, because you know, I don't see myself as like one of the sexiest men in the world. I'm definitely in the top 10,000. Uh, <laughs> That's pretty fucking high. <laughs> Considering there's 7 billion people in the world. I'm you think you're top 10,000? 10, yes. Tell me someone who's not in the top 10,000. Name and shame a comedian we know. Okay. <laughs> that will get us both canceled. They get canceled. So sometimes I'm like, Am is I it... Am I in the top 10,000? 100%. Okay, okay, good. 100p. Okay, 100p. Um, okay, maybe 100,000. <laughs> uh... <laughs> That's it. Well, you're not getting laid by this guy. I can tell you that. I think sometimes I'm like, is it because... I might, you know, do I get laid because they're into a fat thing? <laughs> Or they're into the Asian thing. Right, okay. And it's so weird. The you're moment... like, you pointed at me because you know I'm dating an yeah. Asian guy. So you're like, is that a is, thing? Is that... Is that... Is that... I... Did you like the biryani that comes on the side? Is that what it fuck? is? You like, like chuck That's the right side. Instead of having a cigarette after we fuck, we eat chicken biryani. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. The brilliant. The best <laughs> is when they actually roll the biryani into a, a roll. <laughs> I just smoke it. <laughs> I just smoke <laughs> 
I think that would make his mother proud. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be the day. <laughs> You'll be accepted finally. I'll be accepted finally by his family when I can you, smoke a biryani yeah, joint. Yeah, you and his mom just rolling up biryani <laughs> with each other. <laughs> I can't ever let him hear this. This is going to be he so has to hear so. this. I know. He does watch. So, oh, my God. Stop flirting with me. Sorry. So you're top 10. Sorry, 000. brother. Sorry, brother. You get, <laughs> you get fucked. Yeah. Right on the regular. Yeah. <laughs> We've come with some hard energy today, I man. Know. Jesus. This it's just like, a bit. I'm like crying or laughing. It's just for the purpose of the bit. Just for the purpose of the bit. The reality is you jerk off a lot at home. Yes, yeah, so much. And I like that you're picking poppy seeds out of your teeth. Yeah, while sorry. It's happening at the same People time. who are listening audio won't be able to see it, but I want everyone to know you're picking poppy seeds out of your teeth because yeah. you just wolf down a bagel like yeah. the sex pistol you are. Oh uh, Yeah, yeah. I, I was very hungry and I was running late and I just hadn't eaten and needed coffee and there was a salmon and poppy seed bagel there and this was interesting. They had like seven of these salmon bagels and he gave me the best looking one and when he gave it to me... <laughs> okay. I have a whole thing on like you know you're... Because I was very fat before so you were also at that level of fat where you go, I don't just want a salmon poppy seed bagel. I want that. No, but I think that's normal. Salmon. Whether you're fat. No, I think hey. it's a fat thing. Sometimes no, no, no. when like, if I'm in a shop and I'm like, oh, I want a cookie. And then they go to reach for one and you're like, no, I want that cookie. No, I think that's the a human the thing. The chocolate chips like that are really showing themselves and bubbling See, to the I think that's a human thing. We will... I didn't know it's a fat person thing. No way. No, because I, I go out with skinny friends and they're just like, oh, I'll just have one, whatever. I'm like, they skimmed on it. No, there's no, because I, I disagree. I think that every person just wants like the best has a looking preference one. for a certain. Like, so when he gave it to me, I made a noise I didn't know. I was, <laughs> what was it? Like? Just, like, he he picked it up and I just went. Ugh. <laughs> 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 and the guy was like, "What?" And I said, "Oh, you just, you just picked up my, my favorite one of the lot." And he goes, "Yeah, yeah, I picked up the one that I would have had." I'm like, nice "And one. you don't think that's a fat boy thing?" <laughs> no, at all, not at all. No, he literally picked up a bagel and he went. Ugh. <laughs> A little like Kate Moss would make that same noise. Over heroin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when somebody grabs <sighs> that right spoon of heroin and she goes, Ugh. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> it's a fat thing. I'm telling it's you. It's a fat thing. I'm writing a bit about this. <laughs> Is I get the fat flashbacks when I'm like, so I'm like, oh, I want a slice of pizza. And then they'll pick one up with like not as many tomatoes. Or, and I'm like, what the fuck, man? But then I don't want to look like the big fat fatty. So I go, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, the thing is, I wasn't going to say anything. But it's when he picked it. I was like, ugh. <laughs> That you got that is not so, fat. That's not a fat thing. I disagree. Oh, you got so excited and it's like made your day happy. And we're talking about it. This is a point. This is like a topic of conversation hey, listen, that you were like, do you want to know something great? Ugh. <laughs> Ladies, he fucks. I, if you listen, want to know, he fucks. I will pick out poppy seeds from my teeth while I'm fucking as well. That's the thing. Oh my God. Have you ever eaten while you fucked? Oh I've done food stuff. No. To allow, you think I'm just going to leave it there? Go on. What um, do you mean food stuff? Uh, you know, you like, 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 Chocolate and honey on like somebody's nipples, or like, you know, are uh, you eating a burger well, on someone's ass? I, I have two stories for you. You go, go. When oh I was God. 14, 15, I fucked a cream donut. <laughs> no. <laughs> but but anyone would do that, right? That's not a fat boy thing. No, that's not a fat boy thing either. That was a teenage boy thing. <laughs> okay, no, I know. Right? It was one of the, you know, those donuts, they're not quite. Was it cream filled or was there a hole in it? It was cream filled, like a hot dog bun, cream filled. And I and I lick, I licked it out. Oh my god! <laughs> was this you practicing for like to be with somebody, or was yeah. this you? Uh, okay. Yeah. Can you? Can I just get like a little like? Were you like? Uh, or like? I, I, I held it. Did you name her? Almost like a newborn baby, like that. No, don't say that. <laughs> no, sorry, don't what? say newborn baby. Before you I licked the it hand out, position. Before you licked it out and fucked it. <laughs> Oh my god! I, I just never thought position. you'd be the one to cancel. Actually, I did. You're fucking. I knew you'd be the one to cancel me. Sorry. Oh my god! So you picked it up like an adult woman. Like an yeah, adult woman. Like that's very tiny. Tiny, tiny adult woman. And then I kind of li licked out the cream. Oh my god! But like, 
did my my kind of estimation of what licking yeah pussy would be okay i'm sure it was spot on too oh yeah yeah did the did the donut have a clit yeah 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 it's where the cherry was at the top okay yeah <laughs> and then when i got enough of the cream out i thought well let me put the cream back in let me try and fuck it oh my god but did this just come to you in the moment or was like somebody like was a friend going you gotta fuck a donut it was in the moment yeah okay did you ever tell i mean you talk about it now have you talked yeah. about this on stage before not on stage but just here for the yeah. for you for you guys fives of tens of listeners that yeah I have. yeah for all the this is the clip that's gonna go viral on my podcast yeah yeah <laughs> it's gonna go be on the daily mail yeah 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 freak show man fucks a donut and oh then um i put my penis in it uh, and um it was too wet so it broke <laughs> <laughs> your penis or the donut <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! You told me this is going to be a heartfelt podcast. You know what? I was just thinking that we literally. I was like, we can talk about change. Are... We can talk about anything. And you're like, oh, okay, so this can be heartfelt. Then I was like, yeah. And then you're like, so this one time I fucked a dog. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you something. When you get when we get to the meat and bones of this podcast, the left turn is going to be wild, bruv. <laughs> it's gonna uh, this be... is what it's all about. Oh my god! But okay, hang on. I need to stop you because you said there's been two incidents with food, mm -hmm. and one was fucking a donut. Yeah. What is the second the one? The other one was uh, a, a a partner of mine uh, was into kind of life art drawings. Okay. And they liked like nude drawings, but also fruit. Right. Okay. So I thought that I would amalgamate, do a little collab. Okay. Yeah. Love a collab. Yeah. Because she was like, oh, I'd love to paint you. And I was like, I'm not that comfortable with this nude. Like, I don't want to do that. Oh my God. And that's very um, like... I don't know. That's I don't know what it is, but to I because I'm picturing you like the girl in Titanic, like paint me like one of your French girls, and you're like on your side with like yeah, yeah. a fruit between your boobs and stuff. Th that's that's what basically I'm so I basically got a load of fruit and vegetables. Yeah. And I got some grapes and put it on my nipples. Oh my god. And I got like I had a courgette, some cucumbers, strawberries down my legs, and a butternut squash to cover my cock. As a surprise. And a cucumber in your asshole. No, I didn't put it in my asshole just at that point. Yeah. At the oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Heart and, yeah, and then um, I was messaging her to be like, "Oh, when are you coming home?" She'd be like, oh, "I'll be home in like twenty minutes." She didn't know it was gonna be a surprise. So you were sitting there waiting with covered in fruit. Yeah. Oh my god. She said, "I'll be home in twenty minutes." So like, okay, what I'm gonna do is like get myself ready. Oh my god. So I made sure I was hard and prepared. So you're just jerking off the fruit. Yes, got it. And Thanks then she was running late. She messaged me. She goes, "I'll be another ten minutes." So I was edging for about <laughs> half an hour. And then... <laughs> the, the fact that you said you're edging means you're almost coming. You have yeah. to stop yourself. Yeah. So like that's how turned on you're getting. And I was just getting myself ready. But then you were coming. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then because she takes... Children, us... turn off the podcast now. <laughs> now? <laughs> it's way too far gone. And then um, because she was running late and... I, my mind just kind of wandered. Yeah. She came home and the suddenness of her coming <laughs> home made me come all over some butternut squash. <laughs> that changed me. <laughs> that seems like one of those moments that it's like, you know, those moments that are just like, they're triggering and they sit in the back of your brain and like they are formative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they never leave your psyche. And is it like whenever you see butternut squash, are you terrified now? And does your dick go back inside you or do you get hard? Hard. <laughs> Halloween must you should be see me. You should see me with butternut squash soup. It is fucking... <laughs> it's dipping my balls into it. Sorry. <laughs> what is this podcast? <laughs> it's a thoughtful, sincere podcast about change and growth. Oh my God. I think... I think we've all learned a lot today. Yeah, learned a lot this morning. Oh my God, that is what so fucking funny. <laughs> I did not know where this was going to go, <laughs> but I'm really glad we went here. Have you ever shared these stories publicly? Uh, only one of them. Which, the, not the donut story one. or what? No. Yeah. Butternut squash. The butternut squash. Yeah. That's funny because like, somebody else was involved with the fact that you were... <laughs> she, she surprised me. <laughs> I just wanted to be ready for her. Oh my god! Did I, she appreciate it, or what was her reaction? Was she like, "What the fuck"? She was a bit "What the fuck," but she didn't did appreciate. She, it. Did she walk in and just go, "Oh my god!" I just walked in on him jerking off to fruit. He has a third. <laughs> no, no, she no. She must have not even one like known she, what was. She happening. thought it was hilarious, and right, then of course, 
We waited three hours till we could actually have sex again. Is that your refractory yeah. period? It's yeah. three hours. Yeah. Oh my god! So she can't be like, "Baby, let's go again." You're like, "I, I need hey, to watch." Hey, hey. I need to watch three. Let episodes me get a Bollywood film on. Of and do, of Bollywood. You want a Bollywood film? <laughs> Let me watch the first scene of this Bollywood film for the next three hours. Oh my god! And then I'll be ready. Just see the guy like jumping out from behind the tree. <laughs> but but hold just a button up squash. <laughs> oh my god! This is amazing. <laughs> Oh, I love you. This is why I love you so much. And this is this is why our energies are just they're aligned because we are the same type of pervert. Yes. And I feel like we're both sex pests. We are. And, and we both make noises when we see the right kind of food. The, uh, <laughs> I stand my ground. That, that is something only a fatty would do. Right. Whoever's listening, write in yeah. and tell us. It's gonna be tell my Kate. mom going, No, I make that noise at food too. Yeah. And I'll be like Oh, oh <laughs> fat you fat bitch. <laughs> Sorry, mum. Sorry, mum. He doesn't mean <laughs> it. I don't mean it. He's never seen you. I've never. I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna die. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, let's talk about you. Uh, you're gonna hate. Honestly, they were gonna make a sharp left turn, but it can be anything. So basically, I just talked to people about moments in the life. <laughs> So I came on some button up squash. Be, I can't even be serious with you. Okay. Moments in their life that have like changed them. And it doesn't have to be serious. It doesn't have to be what it can be whatever. It can be as big as small. Because I do think there are those weird sliding doors moments in life where you go like, I didn't even know, like, you know, where you like get fired from a job and then it fucking changes your path or whatever. And I had yeah. somebody on who his was he got punched in the face at a bar for being rude to somebody and that completely changed his life. It's been like, oh I can't So what he turned into a serial killer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's Dexter. Yeah. Um, but he's like, I can't just like mouth off and think it's funny. Think everyone knows I can just like say whatever the fuck I want and be like, there's real life consequences yeah, yeah, yeah. to being. Because I think also as comedians, we just go like, we can talk like this to each other. But then we think sometimes when we go out in the world and you'll just like be like, oh, yeah, you fucking donut fucker. And then yeah. someone will be like, what the fuck yeah, are you talking you about? You forget that human beings just don't exist on the same plane as comedians. Yeah, yeah we yeah, yeah. talk so much shit yeah. that like when you meet somebody who's like a normie and they're yeah. like, what the, f that's really fucked up. And you're yeah. like, oh, shit, I forget about the real world. Yeah. So what is your thing that has changed you? And this can be, I know this is going to be a sharp left turn, but I'm here for it. Oh, God. I, I know why I'm smiling because it's actually quite sad. So my mom died. <laughs> You built it. <laughs> I'm not trying to laugh. I am. Why are you laughing at my mom's death? I am crying at the same time. Okay. <laughs> it's because you built it up, and then you're smiling and you go, "My mom died." I think she would have wanted us to laugh. Yeah, she would have. If you don't laugh, you'll cry, and I oh. agree with you both. Oh, fucking hell. Okay. Okay. Oh, <sighs> right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> How old were you when your mom died? I will stop laughing. Okay. I am yeah. somebody who I get, when I get really uncomfortable, yeah, you start laughing. Serious, yeah, yeah, I'm the same. I start laughing and I start like, people will be like, oh, this is what happened to me. And I'll be like, <laughs> wait till you hear what happened at the funeral. Oh my. Okay. So how old were you when your I was mom 29. Passed? 29. Okay. Um, and at that point, you know, were I you guys close. Yeah. Very, very close. Yeah. Incredibly close. Um, Kind of cheesy to say best friends, but my social calendar was basically oh. my mum's social calendar. No, like, I love that though. I think whatever she was doing, I would be the one to drive her there and drive her back. And yeah, and at the time, uh, I so I started comedy in March 2014, just open mic. Yeah, with zero ambition to become a comedian. Why were you were in banking, right? Or you yeah, were finance. Yeah, yeah. So well, yeah. So I was a I was a banker for six years. Then I was a government policy advisor for five years. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Can you believe this fucking... Literally, no. Like, Lord, I mean, you can't do worse than the fuckers who are in now. Exactly. Like, exactly. They're... And they're all... You're just openly a sex pest. So, yeah. like... You should see what happened every Friday when they brought donuts in. Oh, my God. It was carnage. Yeah, I'm sure it was. <laughs> hey, Shan, get away from the donuts! Put your penis away! Casual Fridays, everyone. Casual Fridays, baby! Casual Fridays. Um, so uh i think that's sweet when people say their mom is their best friend i actually think it's very endearing and especially for some reason when it's like boys i just think that bond is is quite cute the thing is because my mom you know she i've got an older half brother yeah who's seven years older than me and he was taken away by his dad so my mom didn't see him for 24 years oh wow so when i was born i filled the void of 
the son that got taken away from and her. you were like the light of her life probably yeah kind of the light of her life but it was also very it was a very intense relationship because everything centered on me right i've it's got a, a young pressure. i've got a younger brother who's 10 years younger but you know my mum well in, you know up to her death was any time i was alone with my dad would just get very jittery because mm. that's what happened to her you know yeah yeah, yeah. the psychological impact of what had happened anyway so my mom and i were very very close and um <clears throat> at this point i just started comedy as a side thing because you know in the past i'd been a bollywood dance choreographer yeah obviously uh i'd done some amateur dramatics i don't know how much of this is serious and what is <laughs> not. True, no, genuinely. shut up you were not a bollywood choreographer yeah, you Shut. knew this about me. No, I did not. I knew you were policy. I knew you were banking. You were not Bollywood choreographer. I was a Bollywood choreographer for 11 that years. That is amazing. Yeah. That is incredible. Yeah, I can dance a bit. I believe it. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, I love this. I didn't know that about you. Oh, I thought I thought it was common knowledge. No, no, no. I don't spend a lot of time talking about you with other people. Oh, really? Funnily enough, what the I fuck? Know. Do you talk, who do you talk about? I know. I don't know. It's That's weird. insane. I'm the most interesting person in the world. <laughs> In the top 5,000 most interesting people top in the world. 000, top 10,000 best looking. Top yeah. 5,000 most interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get that. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know. For real, you're Bollywood. Yeah, yeah. That's really fucking cool. Yeah. How did you get into that? Basically, I was the fat kid. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got I, that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I hate about formerly fat people. They're so fucking sassy. <laughs> but I, I feel like I can do this because I used to be fat. Oh, I'm still fuck fat. You. You're not fat. I am. I refer to myself as fat a couple times recently. People are like, you're not fat anymore. You can't say that. And yeah, like, you can't justify being fat anymore. But like, I'm fat adjacent. I'm a skinny fat. No, you're a fat skinny. <laughs> <laughs> That's different. It is a bit different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a fat skinny. Okay, yeah. I'll take that. Yeah. That's funny. A friend of mine, he calls me grapes because he just says that's what I've shrunk it down to, like a bag of like <laughs> oh yeah. grapes. And he's like, that's what you are. You're yeah. just a bunch of lumps and bumps but... all jiggling around now. He calls me grapes. Oh, that's actually quite sweet. Oh my God. Is that sweet? <laughs> yeah, that's sweet. Oh my God. Okay. So you were a fat kid, but yeah. you got into Bollywood I was stuff. a fat kid and I would dance, but it turned out I was a pretty good dancer, pretty good mover. Yeah. And then by the age of about 12, 13, people would ask me to like help their cousins get prepared for a dance for a wedding or whatever yeah yeah okay cool and that just became bigger and bigger and bigger and then i started doing bigger shows yeah started getting paid for it that's amazing um and i think the two things were like there's a bit of acting involved there's a bit of dancing involved so it was just yeah. a very entertaining thing to do plus i could see from just how you are you've always sort of been like a performer you always wanted to be like probably like in the center a bit performing like helping you know yeah i've kind of if the whole family has that you know my you know one of our family friends coined uh, a nickname for our family was entertainment.com, basically. So my dad would yeah. get the microphone, he'd do the announcements, my mum would do the cooking, I'd do the dancing, my brother would set up the games, you know. Yeah, Christmas yeah. every year in our house was a huge deal. People would come on yeah. Christmas Eve, there'd be an itinerary. Oh my God, I love that. <coughs> Christmas is my favorite holiday, so when people go all out for it, I'm here Yeah, for yeah, it. Like, we, we'd so put here. a marquee out in the garden, heated, all the kids would stay there overnight. Yeah. And then there'd be an itinerary of games, my dad would make the announcements. Oh, I love that. We'd have like performances. You, know, and you were was, London, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like so, where in London? Are you East London? East London, yeah. Yeah. I don't mean a stereotype, but I just assumed East London. I mean, it was East. I was born in East London, but we moved into Essex. Oh, okay. Yeah. We moved to where the Whiteys are. My, we move every like five years and my mum would say, and I quote, to get away from the brown people. Oh my God. I kind of love that though. Yeah, she I actually it. secretly love it when like people are like, I just find it fascinating when people are like racist against their own cultures. Or like, I remember a long time ago watching an old episode of Jerry Springer and there was like a black guy being like, I want to join the KKK. And the KKK were like, nah, we're good, bro. Yeah. <laughs> we're good on the membership. Yeah. But it's, you're just like, what? what? Like, yeah. it's, my, yeah. mom, my mom basically, very proud Bengali woman, very proud, but she was there. Did she vote for Brexit? She would have done. Oh, right, because she died. So she wasn't around for the vote. Uh, no, she wasn't. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, she would have done. Uh, and she... So my dad was like a tr is a trade union labor man. Right. And my mum on my 12th birthday gave me Margaret Thatcher's path to power. On your 12th birthday, yeah. you got a Margaret Thatcher book. Yeah. What even? I would have loved <laughs> to go, but please tell me that you're writing this into a show. I will do one day. Yeah. Because my mum was like, I want you to be inspired by strong women. And here's, I love that though. Here's the first I, one. I mean, that's good for her. That sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's so many, there was a whole trend on TikTok going around where it's like, 
Um, they were at, girls were asking their boyfriends, name three women who aren't related to you who inspire you. And men were like, uh, my uh, mom. And they're like, no, 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 that uh, aren't related. And they go, Jenna Jameson. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it would be shit like that. And they'd be like, Oprah <laughs> and uh, Beyonce. <laughs> and they would just name three famous women because they had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Can you name three famous women who, or not famous, but three women who inspire you who aren't your family? Um, Thatcher. Yeah. Okay. Not because of her political beliefs, but the fact that she was a woman at that time. Right. Breaking through doing stuff like that. Uh, I would say, um, it's hard actually. Look at this. Look at this. Can't name three women. No, I can name three women, but women that inspire me. Come on. <laughs> You could name me. Don't I inspire you? Yeah, but we're friends. Yeah, I guess so. We're friends. Yeah. Are we best friends? Close. We're close. Yeah, yeah. We will be. We will be. Uh, but you said, like, yeah, women that inspire me. Yeah, who, who, like, can you think of women that inspire you? No, I can't right now. Fuck. I'm going to get you so canceled for this. Th like, not Misogynist, you prick. Because all the women that inspire me are in my family. I mean, that is good. It is good to be inspired. I like that your mom did that. I like that she was trying to go like, here's powerful women. Here's a Thatcher book. And that you were 12. And I love that. I like it. I love that. Kind of okay. Let me tell you the reason why. My grandmother mm -hmm. at the age of 54, she realized, hold on a minute. My husband's a barrister. Why haven't I studied? So she started studying at 54. She became a PhD in big oil literature by the time she died. That is amazing. So my mum, two years before she died, started a law degree. What? Right? My el my eldest aunt, <clears throat> she was, when uh, Bangladesh became independent from Pakistan, she was Taka City's uh, town planning commissioner, the first woman to hold the post. Oh, that's so cool. And like, you know, Bangladesh now, they've had loads of these high-rise developments. Yeah. But there's one house that hasn't been broken down, and that's my aunt's, because when the bulldozers came, she stood and said, run me over, bitch. Okay, so you have very inspiring women in your family. Just in my family. Okay, so that's good. I will let you get a pass because yeah. that's really fucking Thank cool. You. And that's amazing. Yeah. Wow, your mom got her law degree two years before. Well, she, she just started studying, her... yeah, just before she passed. Good yeah. for her. Because I got my master's and she was like, hold on, my mom studied. Why? What? This is bullshit. Let me go and study. That is my favorite thing when people just go, I don't care what age I am or whatever. Like they're yeah. constantly learning. They want to grow. Yeah. They want to evolve. They want to change. Like when people want that, I just, I have so much admiration and so much respect for people who do that, yeah. who are constantly learning. Like when I see somebody who's a little bit older and they're like on their iPhone, on their MacBook and they're doing their thing. Yeah. I fucking, or like doing TikToks. I love that. I think that's incredible. Um, her senior, my mom's senior lecturer came to my mom's funeral. Oh. And said that, you know, your mum was, you probably know this, amazing at arguments. Mm. She was just able to just force and create an argument out of a situation and be able to defend her position. One of my favourite students. Oh, she sounds amazing. So she was called my mum. Anyway, so she, um, March 2014, I started doing comedy and then... What did she think? Was she supportive? Yeah, she came to one gig. Oh, you're going to love this. She came to one gig um, before she passed away. Because her death was unexpected. Mm. She came to a gig. After the gig, I said, how do you find it? And she goes, you're actually really funny. You know, you're a funny guy anyway. But to do stand-up is a different thing. I yeah. said, oh, thanks. And she goes, hmm. But you look really fat on stage. I was like, oh. And then a bit of a break. And she goes, but actually, it's probably in your favor because people find fat people funny, don't they? And I was like, I wish I didn't have this conversation with you. Oh, my God. I know. They, oh, God. Some of the stuff people say to you, though, is just like, I always, when I started comedy, people are like, you know who you remind me a lot? You remind me a lot of, like, Melissa McCarthy or Roseanne or Rebel Wilson. I'm like, fat white women? Yeah, you know, yeah, I remind yeah, yeah. fat white women? Because none of those, well, Roseanne used to be a stand-up, but the other ones, they were never stand-ups. They were yeah. just fat, fat comedic yeah. actresses. Yeah. And that's like, you just get compared to like, it's such a lazy comparison. I get all the brown guys. Yeah. Like, it's just like, it's like the laziest comparison that yeah. people make to just, and I don't know. It's, it's so weird when that happens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, um, but I like that she thought you were funny and she liked it though. That was nice. Yeah. So, you know, <clears throat> probably a bit earnest. I used to play a game with my mom. So like I said, I've got a younger brother. He's 10 years younger. And every, pretty much every day I'd say to her, oh, mom, who's better looking? Me or my brother? And she'd mm. say, your brother. Oh, mom, who's... um. A better around the house, and she said, My brother. The only thing my mum ever said me for was, Who's funnier? Ah. The only thing she always said is, You're, you're the one who makes me laugh the most. Yeah. So, my mum and I were very, very close. We used to spend a lot of time together. We used, you know, I'd finish work and then I'd call her and say, Have you cooked tonight? She said, No. And I said, Shall we go for dinner? And we go to a nice restaurant. Yeah. Just me and my mum hanging out. She'd tell me about what's going on with her mates and all this stuff. So, 
I love that. We were very, very close. Um, and then May, May 2014, so two months later, you know, we went for a pub lunch. Um, she complained of a bit of back pain. She went to hospital that night with a kidney infection. The next morning I called her and she said, yeah, I'm fine. They've given me antibiotics. I'll be home this evening. Let me know what you want for dinner. I said, no, 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 don't worry about that. It's fine. We just hang out. And then two hours later, my dad called me crying, saying I just had to give your mum CPR in the hospital. Oh, my God. And they put her into an induced coma. She died on the Friday. And then on Sunday, it was her funeral. That's a like lot. A week later from the pub lunch where you're just planning out the next three or four weeks yeah. of social engagements. And then the following Sunday, you're at her funeral. Fuck. So if that doesn't change you, yeah. what, what does? And your dad having to witness that and everything and give her CPR, that's, that's traumatic. <clears throat> yeah. So my, you know, my dad's a paramedic. Oh, okay. He's a paramedic. Okay. And he, you know, my dad's one of these very typical kind of immigrant stories. He never takes a day off. Yeah. And that day he was just off and just sat next to my mom in the hospital. And he said that um, your mom said to me, oh, can you close the window? It's feeling, I'm feeling a bit chilly. Yeah. So I said, I went up to close the window and he said, it was just instinct. Something as I was closing the window went, turn around. Yeah. And I turned around and your mum just did like the rattle. Yeah. And I knew something bad was happening. So I started giving her CPR and he brought her back. Wow. He brought her back after three rounds of CPR. Oh. Uh, and then the nurses and everyone came in because you can't treat members of your own family. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, but so lucky he was there. Yeah. Um, but they'd said that the, the, the heart attack that she had was so severe, it broke her brain stem, basically. She had sepsis, and then basically within a week, she just she was gone. Yeah. Um, and so given how close I was to my mum, uh, it, was, it was devastating. Of course. Like, it was everything. That's like losing your best friend and your mom all in one go and like yeah. your confidant and your person because it sounds like you guys were that close. Like it was, yeah. she was your world. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, like I said, you know, I, she'd call me four or five times a day. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I, this is how much it changed me. I quit my job mm. and just pursued comedy. Comedy was my outlet. And yeah. That's the thing I pursued. I did I did a couple of other contract jobs since. I never had a beard. I grew the beard because my mum hated beards. Uh. So I grew the beard after she passed away. Um, my social personality that you know now, yeah. that happened only because, weirdly, because my mum passed away. Because I never hung out with my friends. Right, because you're hanging out with your mum. I hung out with my mum. Yeah. And growing up as a teenager in early 20s, it was a source of, not embarrassment, but people would take the piss. Of course they would. Yeah, of course, of course. You're oh. like a young guy hanging out with your mom. People yeah. are going to like, you know. Yeah. But it's actually so beautiful and so nice to be able to have known that you like, you spent all that time with her. You got so much more time than so many other people yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, And the fact that you really, really did love her and like had her as like a confidant and a best friend, like I think that's really amazing. Yeah, she was my everything. And so when, you know, my social calendar suddenly, all the weekend plans that I usually had with my mom, suddenly I was like, okay, now I've got to find how to fill this diary. Yeah. With, with, with stuff. Um, and yeah, so I, I pursued comedy and, Becoming a comedian, having a beard, that being my look, uh, becoming the kind of person that has a bit of a reputation for going out till quite late yeah, and having a drink. That all happened after my mum died. And in, in a weird way, I feel like the first 29 years of Ishan Akbar, that's a chapter that is finished. Mm. And the last nine years, I'm 38 now, this is a different Ishan Akbar. Yeah. Um, and a lot of my peers will, will probably find it quite unfathomable who the Ethan Akbar was before. Right. Cause you, yeah, I can't even imagine somebody who is like, so like maybe not introverted, <coughs> maybe isn't the right word, but like 
just sort of insular with your world, mm. with your family, and like not mm. really being like, because you are so like the life of the party. Yeah, 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 you yeah. are so like energetic and like you're very charismatic. You're someone that I definitely was like before I even knew you. I was like, oh, I fuck, I like that guy. He's fucking cool because you just people and I'm like people just like you. And yeah, you just thank seem you. like that guy with like that good energy to be around who would feed a random girl tater tots at a party. <laughs> and I love that, and that's yeah, so yeah. beautiful. But to picture you before. Yeah, it is hard to picture you before. Yeah. What you would have been like. Exactly. And so that was singularly probably the biggest change in my life. Um, her funeral was mad mm. uh, because it was my first experience that close of a, of a Muslim funeral and I didn't know what was required. Yeah. And we took the, the coffin to the grave and then Muslims are buried in a, in a shroud. Yeah. And uh, we got the coffin to the grave. And then the imam, who's kind of the priest equivalent, yeah. uh, he says, right, to me and my brother, he goes, right, you two get in the grave. And you have to wrap her in the shroud. We were like, or she's you, already been wrapped. She's already been wrapped. They were like, get in the grave. And we're like, what? And they said, you have to you have to climb into the grave and lower her body in. So me and my brother were like, what? So we climbed in. That's intense. I'm a, I'm a big set. <laughs> yeah, we've established. My brother's a big set. Yeah. So we're kind of wedged into this grave. Oh my God. <laughs> trying to manoeuvre. Yeah. They lower my mum's body into my arms. I'm holding my mum's upper half. My brother's holding her lower half. And we're like, right, we've got it. There's not much space in this grave. I'm like, also again, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. because I'm like, wait, <laughs> picturing the comedic scene yeah, here. Yeah. It gets better because my brother somehow <laughs> managed to lower her legs. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck, how do I, what do I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of, you know, I'm in this weird place. I'm burying my mum, literally. Yeah, right? you're literally I'm her. literally doing it. I've lost the woman that I love the most in the whole entire world. Now I'm in this situation, but you've also got to conduct yourself with a certain level of grace and decorum. Yeah. So I'm like, right, let me Which lower. is so unfair to put that on anyone yes. at a funeral like i think you can have no expectations grief doesn't look one way yeah, exactly and it is whatever it is to that person however it looks if they want to avoid it compartmentalize not address it if they want to have a breakdown whatever like it, that's their grief yes it's not yours to tell them how Absolutely. to grieve but I, it's such an awful expectation that people have that you would need to be stoic for the family and hold it together and yeah. everything and that's i mean i st i was crying not wailing but i was crying yeah so course. i'm like right how do i maneuver my mom's body now but because my head was way over the place, what I did is I, I lowered my knees, but I didn't lower my mum. So I ended up teabagging my mum's forehead. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I hate you and love you all at the same time. Oh, my God. You teabagged your mother's forehead. Oh, my God. In the moment... Could you see the comedy in it? Or in the yes. moment where you're like, this is awful. Because when I when I was your brother like, what the fuck are you doing, man? <laughs> when I when I felt my right testicle land on her forehead. Oh my god. <laughs> so graphic. So graphic. Uh, my immediate reaction was like my eyes opened. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> I should, me... So in the nervousness of what happened, because you know, it's a sudden movement. Of course, of course. I stood up and kind of just like let go of my mum and she just oh dropped. My god. Oh my god! And the imam, wait, were they like, uh, maybe you climb out of there now? Oh my god! That must be burnt into your brain as one of those just like permanent memories that will oh, never. I mean, just... anytime you think of it, do, do you just flash back to that yeah, moment? Yeah, it's just the moment of like my hands letting go and just or the thud after a tea bag. R.I.P. Mummy. Then... Oh my god! And then. We climbed out of the grave and I'm like... How do you even climb out of a grave? There's like a ladder. They give a ladder. There. Right. Okay. Okay. So we climb out of the grave and then um, what they do is they turn the body to face Mecca. Right. <laughs> when they turn the body on the side of the wall that my mum was facing, there was like An ass two ass cheeks. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and I turned around and on my tunic... Just two brown aspirins. You know what? I actually love this story. And I feel like <laughs> knowing you and the fact that your mom said you were 
always the person to make her laugh, she would have probably yeah. fucking loved that. Yeah, 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 yeah. She yeah. would have seen the humor in it, and yeah. she would have loved that as yeah. this like moment of just like <laughs> hilarity that you look back on. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> that. I'm picturing the scene play out in like a show. Yeah. I can see it scripted. I can see it in yeah. a show playing out. Yeah. And you climbing up the ladder and slipping and like falling yeah. off or whatever. Yeah. Like it's gonna it's so It was absolute chaos. What was your dad afterwards? Was he like, what the fuck? I don't think my dad knew about the tea he banging. He was just too Yeah, he was yeah. Like he, I don't think he knew about the tea banging or the ass print. Oh my god. But I knew. So funny. I knew. Of course you knew. That is hilarious. What, what's your relationship like with your dad? So you were super close with your mom. How close were you with your dad? Well, this is very interesting. So my dad, the whole family is very close. Yeah. But actually the truth is after my mom passed away, I, this sounds weird, but I saw my dad. You know, my dad, like, he was such a dutiful father who just worked and worked and worked and him and mom would argue about money all the time. And yeah. that he, he was very much that person but after he died after after she died you know my dad used to uh, to describe him as having a temper is probably a bit unfair but he was someone who was prone to bouts of getting quite angry yeah he hasn't shouted since he hasn't screamed uh. he cooks he cleans yeah um he as a, as a man you know at the time I would, I'd just turned 30, I looked to my dad and I was like, okay, if I'm 10% of the man you are when I die, I'll look back and say, I lived a life. It was a life well lived. Have you said that to him? I think so. I think so. I think my dad hopefully knows how much I look up to him, respect him and admire him. Yeah. He's, my dad's my hero. And oh. I didn't know that until my mum died. Yeah. I didn't know that he was my hero until my mum died, which is that. a very odd thing to say. My mum, of course, is my hero, but I did not realise that as a man, to be able to have my dad as, a, as my role model, I feel so lucky and blessed. Yeah, it's a very and, lucky thing to have that. And so in terms of change, certainly my dad's place in my psyche and my dad's place in my mind has changed massively because my mum was such a powerful dominant figure in the household yeah he was just kind of just in the shadows but what makes him so amazing is he was happy to be there yeah just and, being like the dutiful father husband yeah, provider yeah, absolutely and he knew that that was his role at that time and though he never felt emasculated by it he never felt worried about it he was happy that his wife was the life and soul of the party and the glue for the community yeah and then when she passed away he emerged and he was like oh i can do this too yeah. oh i love you know? i think that's beautiful Mo, my grandma moved in and raised us and and she was like the real spirit of our household and when she passed away like she raised us from when i was like an infant basically until she passed away when i was around 25 and uh it was she was the soul of the household mm. and the main point for everything. And it is true how I saw my parents afterwards. It was very different when she passed away because she was very much the one who like had the hand in it, kind of raising us and stuff. Mm. And she's the one when I think back of like, cause both my parents just, they just worked right. So they were very busy and who drove me to piano lessons, who drove me to all the things. It was my grandma. I spent loads and loads of time with her. Like she right. was like my person. And I know what you're talking about, seeing them a bit differently. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then also your dad softening over the years as well and becoming a bit of a different version. And like yeah. my dad has had some health scares and that for him has really softened him. And he's much more emotional now. He's yeah. much more just like expressive in tune with it. I have better conversations with him now as he's gotten older, but he was always that sort of strong, silent type. Mm. Um, in a household where the women were sort of more dominant, but he, yeah, he never seemed to sort of resent it or anything. So I, I totally relate to yeah. a lot of that. And it just made me respect him so much more. Yeah. Like uh, that's a real man, a real man. Yeah. who can just like be there for his family, be such a strong backbone and doesn't need to be like the one who's overtly going, I'm in charge. I'm the man. That's the thing about all these like Andrew Tate. Yeah. yeah. Everything. They're going, I gotta be the man. I gotta be man. I'm like a real man. 
just does what needs to get done, takes care of his family yeah, yeah, yeah. in whatever capacity that means. Yeah, whatever I'm that not looks just like to them. Financially, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just is the safety, is the provider, is like yeah. the security for his family. Like yeah. to me, that is a man, a man who can stand up and be there and hold his family together. And even if that means he's the one in the background and yeah, in the yeah, shadows yeah. making his kids have their dreams and all that. Like that to me, that's a fucking man. Exactly. Not going that. like, I gotta be big man all the time. Yeah. Like it's just it's different. And like I think that's just what the Andrew Tate guys just they miss. They miss completely. And the context of it is this is a Pakistani man who has raised a Muslim and you know, he's got a brother who is so religious now, he will refuse to come over to the house because we've got a dog. Yeah. And, you know, so my dad comes from that context. Yeah. And for him to be so open yeah. and so kind and so yeah. you know, six months ago I did a gig and one of my friends, a gay guy called Jordan, was there. My dad was sat next to him, I had a lovely time and afterwards my dad said to me, You know, I I've been told what I've been told about gay people. Yeah. I don't know many, but I spent that three hours with Jordan. I don't understand why people have such a big issue. And I said, Dad, at 63 years old, as a Pakistani man, for you to even say that yeah. is beyond comprehension. Yeah. And that is testament to the kind of man that you are, that that's your characteristic. And I hope... I feel like I've got that. Yeah. And that without me realizing, even though my mum was probably seemingly the more liberal of the two, weirdly, despite the fact that she loved Thatcher, um, I got that from you. Yeah. And I didn't know that. I didn't I, it took me it took my mum passing for me to understand how much of my father's son I am. But also how much of my mother's son I am in so many ways. Yeah. But the characteristics that I love and respect and admire from my father. I've got some of them. Yeah. And I just, every day, I'm like, I'm so fucking lucky. It sounds like your family is fucking amazing. They're cool. They're a it cool bunch. Like they're very amazing. When am I coming over for dinner? When's whenever your dad you want. me dinner? Yeah, whenever you want. And he would, he would love that. He would love nothing more than to cook dinner for you. I promise you that. And then you can teach me Bollywood dance. Yeah, I can do that. No problem. But don't fuck a donut in front of me. It's quite an amazing sight, to be honest. <laughs> so now I like to ask every guest at the end one question. Mm. What is something in your life? Because we, we're comics, we're on the road a lot, we do a lot of stuff. And yeah. like you said, you're someone who's like really open to evolving and change and all of that. And you see that. But what's something in your life that you hope never changes? Uh, something in my life I hope that never changes. Uh, about myself or just the situ Anything. situation? Could be about yourself, could be about whatever you want it to be. Um, I would say... This, I don't mean this to sound as arrogant as it's about to. Just say it. It's okay. We've gotten all sorts of answers. My nature. Mm, no, that's good. Like, like I, I, I really love who I am as a person. Yeah. And I have a lot of fun as me now. Yeah. The person that is. And I think and I hope that the people I'm around also feel that. They do. And I, I hope that, you know, something like losing your mum can you know i've lost jobs i've had breakups i've had things that could make could alter your nature yeah and somehow all those breaks that i've had have altered my nature positively and i sincerely hope that nothing happens in my life that makes me angry or bitter or changes the core of who i am because this is fucking fun yeah like i uh, mean the fact that we get to do this is part of our job like yeah, this is crazy this is crazy and nothing nothing bothers me nothing offends me nothing gets me angry and that doesn't mean i'm dead inside no but it's just it's not worth it but you have a perspective on life that some people don't have yeah and you can just go like it's it is to do with your nature and the fact that you deal with it because people encounter hardships and breakups and deaths and all these things and there's one of two ways you can handle it you can let it destroy you and eat you up yeah it's not going to change the situation yeah but you can let it kill you inside and be that angry, bitter person, or you can go, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to reflect and grow. And this is just part of my life that'll change. And things yeah. just are constantly changing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's a great answer. I think not being, you know, cha not changing your nature would, would be a great one that you want to. And I think, you know, so much of my life, particularly as a kid and all of us have this, whoever's listening, you, whoever it might be, we forget to appreciate ourselves. Yeah. I think we forget to appreciate our bodies, our minds, our souls that that enable us to survive. 
the things that we have to survive. Yes. Like I was watching this YouTube of this girl who, because I, as I was sort of losing all this weight and I was going through all this stuff and there's a lot, there's a big tendency to kind of hate yourself. And I spent my whole life hating myself, hating Mm. my body, hating everything about Mm. myself, just speaking so badly to myself. And there is a point, I saw this girl talk about it where she goes, you have to be thankful and give yourself credit because it was the older version of you that allowed you to be the newer version. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And without that person, like that, that girl got you through lots of shit. Yeah. And without her, you wouldn't be where you are. And I think we don't give ourselves enough credit and we don't back ourselves enough in those moments. I, so I just totally agree with that. I fucking love you, man. I love you too, baby. Oh, this is such a good I episode. I love you too. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for I'll having me. I'll tag you in all of the things. And we can catch you on Sex Education. You can. So exciting. Yes. When, when are you going to start being on that? When's the new season out? That, uh, I think it's July. July. Yeah, it's a couple of months. So and we don't know what character you are or whatever, but we will. Yeah, I can't tell you, I'm afraid. No, Sorry. I'm so excited Sorry. for this, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you again. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Bye. Uh-huh.